Alrighty hosses, welcome back and this video is going to be the coolest video yet We're going to talk about keyword research and I'm going to give away all my secrets It's going to be sweet So whenever we're talking about keywords, we first need to decide which keywords we should target So for example, let's say that you're making a website like mine where I have a bunch of programming tutorials How do I know to use the keyword programming tutorials? Why don't I use programming lessons or programming courses? How do you decide which keywords to use? Well, let's go ahead and start with the basics. First of all, do not target impossible keywords. So say that I'm helping my grandma out with her homemade applesauce business because she is getting pretty successful around town and she wants to expand, sell these bad boys online. So she says, oh, why don't we target the keyword apple? But of course, even though my grandma is fantastic at making app sauce, she doesn't know a lot about SEO. So I told her, grandma, the keyword Apple is basically impossible and you're never gonna be able to get number one on this no matter how good your applesauce is because you have to compete with Apple, the company. So it's just not gonna happen. And to be realistic, no matter how great her applesauce is, she's probably never gonna rank number one for the keyword applesauce. I mean, there's probably gonna be a bunch of recipes and Wikipedia articles, and you know, maybe like Mott's applesauce is always gonna rank number one for this. So she should probably try to target some less competitive keywords. So in that sense, just use common sense. Don't try to go after, you know, an incredibly competitive or popular keyword already. Now, another thing that you should think about is what is the customer or user searching for? It's not always about what the website is, like homemade applesauce, but whenever someone actually wants to buy applesauce online, what do they type in? They don't type in grandma homemade, can I not type homemade applesauce because they don't even know about her business or anything like that. What would I type in if I'm trying to buy applesauce online? Well, buy applesauce online. So even though the website may be grandma's homemade applesauce, this is what the user is actually gonna type in. So again, this all comes from common sense the majority of the time, although later on we're gonna be taking a look at some tools. And check this out. So not only what the user is looking for, but what type of content they're going after. So my website right here, like I said, I have a bunch of programming videos. I don't have a lot of like programming documentation or ebooks or anything like that. So whenever I'm just typing or looking to go after programming tutorials, I need to think about that. So maybe I don't want to target programming guide because people who type programming guide, they may be looking for documentation about some language or maybe some text or maybe some ebook or something like that. What my website is right here are programming video tutorials. So this would be a great keyword for me, even though it technically is like a programming guide that you can watch online, whatever. So just think about that, not only what your content is, but what the user is actually going to be searching for. So now I'll tell you guys something cool. So that's basically how you can use common sense and try to guess what the user is gonna search for. There's another thing that you can do and that's let's not guess what the user is searching for. Let's just figure it out. So back in the early days of YouTube, whenever I was just like first starting out, like my very first month, I started making tutorials and no one was finding them. I thought they were pretty good videos, but I wasn't very well known and you know, there's just no way that anyone could ever find my videos in the hundreds of millions of search results or whatever. So I needed to find a way to have my videos appear at the top whenever a user searched for tutorials. So I was doing a bunch of stuff wrong, but the main thing that I did that I changed that really boosted you know, my video popularity is I would go to YouTube and let's say that I was making a series about Java. I would type in Java and then I would say, you know what, instead of just trying to guess whether to use Java tutorials or Java lessons or Java courses in my title, let me just look at autocomplete. Now, the way that this autocomplete works is basically what Google does, and by the way, Google owns YouTube, so whenever I say Google, I'm talking about the same thing, 
is it looked at everyone who typed in Java before. And then it says, the people who typed in Java before, the most common thing they typed after this was Java tutorial for beginners. So that's what people are most likely to type in. Now, a little less likely is Java brains, Java programming for beginners, so on and so forth. So basically, whenever I made a Java video, and the results are probably different now than they were back then, but I would pretty much name it Java Tutorial for Beginners. So then whenever anyone searched for this, look at this, we got two ads and boom. <laughs> look at that, my playlist number one. So again, you can either like go with my grandma and just guess, try to find out what the user is looking for, or you can just use autocomplete in Again, what this did is it basically was like YouTube handing all of the answers that I ever wanted right to me on a silver platter. So after I started doing that, my views went through the roof. And that is why, again, back then, I'm like, who's going to want to watch programming tutorials online? No one was doing it. Maybe like a thousand subscribers was like the most popular channel. And now I have over a million subscribers because I just... I don't know it's a pretty cool trick so there you go and again if you guys are like I'm just gonna use this trick and then I'm gonna get the most popular videos or website in the world you still need to have awesome content so even though now users could actually find my videos I still needed to make the best videos possible so that's what I always try to do so again if you make the best content they're gonna find you naturally but there is a nice little tip and another cool thing is let's say um, you want to make a website about like Java tutorials. So not only can you use autocomplete right there, but if you want to get different ideas of kind of similar things people are searching for, you're like, you know what, maybe tutorials isn't the best keyword. Scroll all the way down and it says, oh, the people who search for Java tutorials also search for these things, Java Hello World, Java video tutorial, Java interview questions. So if you're like, you know what, my video is actually Hello World. It's the very first introductory video. So maybe instead of naming it introduction, I'm going to name it Hello World and boom. I mean, guys, even though they aren't naming their formulas, Google and YouTube is never going to name or give you their formula. They're pretty much giving you all the answers, slapping it right in your face, right in front of you. They even bolded certain things. I mean, oh, it's so beautiful, guys. So the last thing I want to mention before I let you guys go is this. If you ever get in a situation where you're like, all right, so I found two different keywords and they both are really good. I can use either or in my title. So I'm making Python programming tutorials and I know I want to use learn Python or learn program. What you can do is you can go to Google Trends, and this basically allows you to type in two keywords, and you can pretty much see the popularity of it. So this is essentially the amount of people who search for it. So we can see that a lot more people, well, I don't want to say a lot more, but more people search for learn programming than learn Python. Now, just keep in mind, you don't just always want to choose the one that's more popular because, yes, the one that's more popular, more people are searching for it, but it's also more likely more competitive as well. So again, just keep that in mind. And this video is getting kind of long. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Hope you learned a little something. And uh, well, I will see you guys next time.